Welcome to this quick start tutorial for V-Ray for Rhino. In this video, we'll show you how to use V-Ray Swarm, a distributed rendering system that allows you to render on multiple machines at once using a simple web interface. Swarm may be installed alongside V-Ray for Rhino, but also may be installed on its own by launching the V-Ray installer and selecting to install just V-Ray Swarm. You do not need to install Rhino or V-Ray for Rhino on a machine that you just want to use as a render node machine. Just install Swarm. Likewise, you don't need to install Swarm if you do not want the machine to be a render node. You can just install Rhino and V-Ray for Rhino without Swarm and still be able to render on render nodes that have Swarm. If you already have installed V-Ray for Rhino with its license, you won't need to install the license server. On machines that do not have V-Ray for Rhino already installed, you will need to install the license server and set that up with your proper license for that machine to be able to render in the swarm. Lastly, you can install the license server on each machine or have the machines look at a network machine for their license. The local machine always uses one render node license during rendering. A render node license is required for each additional render node machine participating in the job. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and install just Swarm. You likely don't need to change any of these settings. Just make sure to uninstall any previous installations if you have any, and make sure that our firewall exceptions is checked on. We'll leave the address and port options as is unless you're using a license server, so this is where to input that server's IP. Click install now, and that's it. You want to install Swarm on all machines you intend to distribute renders to. Now that we're installed, let's get into the configuration for the interface of the render node machine. Open a web browser. Here I'm using Microsoft Edge. To access the interface, you need to type in the browser localhost 24267, where 24267 is the default port used in the installer. To set a different communication port during installation, turn off Auto Discovery, and this will display the relevant option. As a side note, you can remotely access Swarm installed on a different machine by typing in that machine's IP address and the port number instead of using localhost. Now that we are in localhost, we are greeted by the network page, and we can see the name of the current machine up here, and other machines in the swarm in the list below. In the right corner, you can enable or disable the node for swarm rendering. Click in the upper left to access the different pages for the interface. Switch to the log page to see any messages from this machine's render job progress, which is good for troubleshooting if needed. This icon access display options for the log. In the resource usage page, you can see how machines in the swarm are doing as far as CPU usage, GPU usage for the current machine, its memory, network and storage. Now let's dive into configuration. Making any changes to configuration here requires that the node be disabled for rendering before those changes take effect. So go ahead and disable the render node and the options become available. Tags allow you to tag this node with a descriptor that defines something about the machine, like if this is one of a few machines that has a powerful GPU, or let's say a machine is not a workstation but a node on a render farm. All of these render node machines come with a default tag. So let's tag this machine as render node and click add and then click save. Now you can re-enable the node. Now let's click on the network page. Again, this shows all the available Swarm machines on the network, displaying their machine names, status, IP address and their tags right here, along with some important information like the V-Ray version. Here, we confirm the addition of the tag that we added to this machine, number 52. Selecting a machine allows you to enable or disable it easily. 
copy configuration will duplicate the settings from your current machine, which is number 52, to the ones selected in the list. You can select multiple machines using the Shift or the Control key. I'll go ahead and copy my configuration to 50 and 51. But I'll first need to disable them both at once and then copy the configuration over to them before re-enabling them both. Now, if you select one render node, you can access the Swarm interface by clicking where it gives the IP and URL here in the interface. This opens a new tab, putting us into that machine, so managing several render nodes can be much easier than going to each physical machine. Now let's see Swarm in use on our Rhino project. Here, we are already in the scene file code Swarm Start, which you can download from the tutorial page linked below. Once you have the project loaded, open the Asset Editor from the V-Ray toolbar. Click the Settings tab and click on Swarm. Enable Swarm to see some more settings appear. Once you start rendering, you'll notice the current usage bar gives you feedback on the Swarm usage. The Go slider below determines how much of the Swarm to throw onto the rendering, which is defined by a percentage of the available machines. Tags is where the render node tag that we created earlier comes in handy. You can click on the tags to add or remove them so that your swarm render distributes only to the machines with this tag. When no tags are chosen, all available render node machines visible in Swarm Manager will be used. Click on the text field here to add tags as needed by typing them in or selecting from the drop down menu. Go ahead and add the render node tag. By enabling the Cap CPU Utilization button, you'll cap the CPU usage of the local machine to a single core. Let's leave it off for this tutorial and the local machine will render at full capacity. All the render settings are taken care of in this scene for the final image. And as you can see, Progressive is disabled, which is typically better when you want to swarm render as distributing the render is more optimized for using buckets over progressive. And since we already have Swarm enabled, go ahead and start a render. After a moment the render begins and you can notice the usage goes up a 33%. Once it got past 25%, it stops adding render nodes to the Swarm, but as it's rendering, you can increase the Go slider to dynamically adjust and add more resources to the render. And of course, you can also turn that down as well and the render nodes will drop off the swarm. Now, I'll add a couple more text to the swarm pool and more nodes will populate the render dynamically. Zoom into the render and you can see each render node name in the individual buckets of the render. Click this icon and it opens the Swarm interface of the currently selected master node. You can see some more details of what Swarm is doing on the render. For example, I'll remove resources from the render and you can see the interface updates as the machine drops off. Ok, let's get this frame rendered with all our nodes. And here we can see the image being finished up with distributed rendering using V-Ray Swarm, saving me a lot of time over rendering on just my one local machine. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video on Swarm for V-Ray for Rhino.